Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to describe how ultrafiltration takes place in the nephron of the kidneys. You should then be able to describe the adaptations of the nephron that allow ultrafiltration to take place. In the last video, we looked at the structure of the nephron. We saw that each kidney contains around 1.5 million nephrons. When blood passes through the glomerulus, small molecules are filtered from the blood into the Bowman's capsule. These small molecules include the waste molecule urea. Scientists call this process ultrafiltration. Now the problem is that some useful molecules are also filtered out of the blood. This includes glucose and amino acids. So when the blood passes through the proximal convoluted tubule, these useful molecules are then returned back to the blood. And scientists call this process selective reabsorption. So in this video, we're going to look in detail at ultrafiltration. And in the next video, we look at selective reabsorption. OK, I'm showing you here a close-up of the glomerulus and the Bowman's capsule. Blood enters the glomerulus via the afferent arteriole, which runs from the renal artery. So this blood is under relatively high pressure. Blood leaves the glomerulus via the efferent arteriole to the renal vein. Notice that the afferent arteriole has a much greater lumen or space than the efferent arteriole. This means that a greater volume of blood can pass into the glomerulus via the afferent arteriole than can leave via the efferent arteriole. And because of this, the blood in the glomerular capillaries is under a great deal of pressure. Scientists call this hydrostatic pressure. Now this high level of hydrostatic pressure forces small molecules to pass out of the blood and into the Bowman's capsule. This includes urea, water, glucose, amino acids, vitamins, hormones and mineral ions. However, blood cells, platelets and most plasma proteins are too large to pass through, so these remain in the blood. Now the Bowman's capsule contains specialised cells called podocytes and we can see these here. Notice that the capillaries are very close to the podocytes. I'm showing you here a close-up of a blood capillary and a podocyte. As we've seen, the blood in this capillary is under a high level of hydrostatic pressure. And this hydrostatic pressure forces small molecules to leave the blood. Now, there are some key ideas here that you need to understand. Firstly, there are gaps or pores between the endothelial cells of the capillary. These gaps are wide enough to allow small molecules to leave the blood. So as you can see, the capillary endothelium is acting as a sieve. Secondly, between the capillary endothelial cells and the podocytes, we have a layer of collagen and other proteins. This is called the basement membrane. Small molecules can pass through the basement membrane. However, cells, platelets and plasma proteins are too large to pass through the basement membrane. So again, the basement membrane acts as a sieve. Now, the podocytes are also adapted for ultrafiltration. Podocytes have feet-like extensions called pedicels. Pedicels are wrapped around the outside of the capillary. Gaps between the pedicels allow only small molecules to pass through into the Bowman's capsule. So as a result of ultrafiltration, the fluid in the Bowman's capsule contains water, urea, glucose, amino acids, vitamins and mineral ions. However, the fluid does not contain any blood cells, platelets or large plasma proteins. Now, many of the molecules in the Bowman's capsule are useful, for example, glucose and amino acids. So in the next stage of the nephron, these molecules are reabsorbed back into the blood. This process is called selective reabsorption and this takes place in the proximal convoluted tubule. And we'll be looking at selective reabsorption in the next video.